Precipitation reactions are absolutely beautiful chemistry. But what's the science behind it? How does it work? Today we're going to delve a little deeper into precipitation reactions and try and understand the science behind this beautiful thing. So today we're trying to understand precipitation reactions. This is one of my favorite. This is uh, lead nitrate and potassium iodide. Uh, these are two solutions that when you combine them together, they make an insoluble solid. Uh, that's the yellow color that you're seeing. That yellow is actually a solid in the solution. So uh, we're gonna let this one sit for a little while while we talk about precipitation reactions and we'll come back and look at it here in a little bit. So what is a precipitation reaction? Well, these are commonly known as double replacement reactions in the world of chemistry. Essentially what's happening is you have two ionic solutions that when combined, they'll form an insoluble solid and that, that solid precipitates. It, it falls out of the solution. It, it rains, so to speak. So uh, that's, that's, a little, uh, that's a little dense. Let's back up and kind of look at some of the things and, and we'll actually prepare a, a precipitation reaction right here together. First off, we need to talk about what is a solution. So let's prepare a solution really quick. It's, it's very simple. A solution is defined as a solute or the minor component that is dissolved in a solvent, the major component. For us, our major component is gonna be water. And in this case, the minor component or the solute is gonna be silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is an ionic compound. It's the combination of silver and nitrate, uh, usually silver dissolved into nitric acid, but uh, let's not get into the details of that. Silver nitrate is a soluble salt. Uh, what that means is that when I add the silver nitrate to the water and mix it up, it will eventually dissolve. And once it's all dissolved, we have a solution a silver nitrate solution. Sometimes you have to stir it both ways. Just kidding, that makes no difference. Oh, almost, not quite. And there you have it, a solution of silver nitrate. So all of the silver nitrate crystals that we put in have now dissolved. They're still in there. They've just dispersed amongst the water. It makes it a clear colorless solution and you can't see any crystals of silver nitrate. So we, we would say that it's totally dissolved. And that's the solution. It's as simple as that. So, I mean, even the idea of making Kool-Aid, you know, how do you make Kool-Aid? Well, you, you fill the pitcher up with water, you add some sugar. I mean, you gotta have sugar in your Kool-Aid, right? And you stir that up, what happens to the sugar? It's still there. You still taste it, it's still sweet. It just becomes invisible because it's dissolving into the solution. Same idea here with the silver nitrate. And now the other solution I'm gonna use is uh, very common. It's gonna be some sodium chloride. This is the salt that you put on your pizza and french fries. We're gonna dissolve some salt in uh, water. That'll be our other solution. Two solutions both of which are clear and colorless. Uh, this is gonna be beautiful. So let's recap. We started with a couple of solutes. We had salt and we had silver nitrate. We dissolved the salt in water. We dissolved the silver nitrate into water separately here, uh, which gave us two clear colorless solutions. It's important to note that they are complete solutions. There's no leftover salt particles. There's no leftover silver nitrate pieces that are floating around in there or anything. They've dissolved completely. We're going to combine these two solutions together and see what happens. Yep, 
it precipitates. I thought I'd filter some of this so you could see the silver chloride because it's taking it quite a while to separate so I'll just run some of it through a filter and, and you'll be able to see the, the, the precipitate at the bottom here. But that's gonna take forever as well so uh, hmm. maybe we can just do this. There you go. There's some silver chloride. That's a precipitation reaction. So it's actually a chemical process, a chemical change that's occurring. We have two different couples that we're bringing to the party, so to speak. So combining the silver nitrate with the sodium chloride produces sodium nitrate, which is soluble. So we're not seeing that at all. It's dissolved in the solution. And it also produces silver chloride. Now silver chloride is the insoluble piece of this puzzle. It's what does not dissolve and it's what's turning the solution a, a milky white color in this case. Uh, from earlier, our yellow solution, uh, that was the lead iodide that's not soluble in that solution and it's making a yellow color in this case, so very cool. Now I did get a little bit of the silver chloride from the bottom of the beaker. It was uh, quite a interesting challenge but we got some and I just wanted to show you how insoluble it really is so put it in a little beaker add some pure water my bottle's empty add some distilled water And right away you can tell it's uh, it doesn't really want to dissolve. It's sitting on the bottom there, so we'll stir it up a little bit. Uh, the thing is, we could stir it all day long. It, it's not actually going to dissolve into the solution. It, it might disperse. It might make it look a little milky, but if you let it sit, it all settles back down to the bottom again. It, it precipitates, it falls to the bottom. That solid is actually a little more dense, a little heavier than the, the solution that it's in, and so it wants to be at the bottom. That's why we call it a precipitation reaction. So there you go, that's a precipitation reaction in a nutshell. Hopefully my example was silver nitrate and sodium chloride. To produce silver chloride and sodium nitrate was helpful to you. Hopefully it makes sense now and, and helps you to understand the, the idea behind a precipitation reaction or what we more commonly call a double replacement reaction in the world of chemistry. So there's no denying that precipitation reactions can be just some beautiful chemistry. And hopefully this video helps you to understand the idea behind them a little better. That one really got chunky, I like it. <laughs> See that? You can really see that the lead iodide has now settled out of the solution for the most part and it's a pretty clear solution on top. And if you enjoyed this video, I, you know, a like might be in order, I'd sure appreciate it. And you might share it with someone, especially if they're going through some chemistry courses and trying to understand the idea behind precipitation reactions. And you know, if you enjoyed this video or any of the reactions that you saw in here, make sure you go check out some of my older videos about precipitation reactions. I'll also put some links down in the description below. 
man, we did some really cool ones that were just absolutely beautiful. So please make sure you go check those out as well. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there. There's a load of other videos and a lot of cool things in the works. So, uh, you know, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And aside from that, mates, I'll catch you guys next time. We got some red iodide on the table. It's not good because it's red. Also because it's yellow. It's so yellow. Alright, clean that up, mates.